Now this is the 50 millimeter full frame anamorphic lens by Suray, and Suray as a company has been really good at giving the anamorphic look without the anamorphic price tag. Now I am going to be testing this lens against a couple of my different cameras, and I do find that this lens is almost perfect at its price point. However, there might be two things you want to know about, but there's also two solutions that come with some of the quirks that are with this lens. But let's shoot first and answer questions later. Now in terms of the body and the design of the 50 millimeter anamorphic lens, like this feels like a cinema lens. Now, just like other cinema lenses and other anamorphic lenses, it is going to be a manual focus. So if you're looking for autofocus, you're not gonna find it here. But you're also gonna get a lens that's built to last and it's sturdy because it does have that metal housing. Now I have done a video about the 35 millimeter anamorphic lens and it's significantly smaller than this guy. However, you are still gonna be able to get great optical looks from either one, but the video is more about the 50 millimeter. Now you might also note that this has a longer minimum focus distance and a lot of anamorphic lenses do unfortunately without the use of diopters it's really hard to get macro and close-up shots and i think that's just the nature of the anamorphic look in general some things you're gonna have to give up and at 50 centimeters as a minimum focusing distance you're probably not going to get too many macro shots using this guy now don't get it twisted the 50 millimeter anamorphic lens by suray is also a modern day lens it is going to have a lot of the sharpness and those qualities that you would find out of a spherical 50 millimeter that's from the modern day but it does give you the anamorphic look with the aspect ratio at 1.6 times D-squeeze, and also you're gonna get the signature blue flares that we'll talk about a little bit later. But if you do find that the digital edge is a little bit much for you, there is an 82 millimeter filter thread at the front of this lens, so you could use a lot of common circular filters in order to mitigate that. Now, in terms of the actual image quality and the color that comes out of this, I love the anamorphic look that comes out of some of the Suray lenses. Now, this is the second anamorphic lens that I've used on my full frame camera, and the color renders really, really well, and you are gonna get that signature anamorphic look with that aspect ratio, and as well, you're gonna get the flaring when put up to a light source. Now, I have taken this out in a couple of different situations to test it out, but so far I've been loving the look and I've been loving the actual images that I'm able to produce that's coming out of the Suray Anamorphic. Now, if you are having some difficulty with a minimum focusing lens out of the 50 mil anamorphic or any anamorphic lens in general, you might wanna opt for diopters. Now, if ND filters are sunglasses for the front of your lens, then diopters are gonna act like magnifying glasses. And basically what it's going to do is it's gonna help you get a little bit closer in terms of the image and help magnify and close down that minimum focusing distance. Now, it is going to be another piece of glass. So having the quality of glass that's gonna match the lens that you have is gonna be important. And I'm gonna leave a couple of links down in the description down below for some high quality diopters. Again, you're going to get what you pay for there, so if you get something that's cheaper quality, it's going to look that way. However, I have used this to close down the minimum focusing distance, and it's been pretty good ever since. I really do like that the Suray Anamorphic lens is shaped and formed like a cinema lens, so it does have the gear teeth for follow focusing system. It does have a longer focus throw as well, so you're not going to throw off your focus, which is incredibly important, especially when shooting anamorphic. Now, the Suray Anamorphic lens does have a 1.6 times squeeze, so you're going to need to de-squeeze by 1.6 times in post, and even if you want to view it, especially on on a Sony camera because they don't have anamorphic de-squeeze, you're gonna have to use that in your monitor. Now, I did find that I'm not gonna use my Atomos Ninja 5 in order to do that because the de-squeeze options are only 1.5 and jump up to 1.8 and they don't accommodate for 1.6. However, my Hollyland monitor actually has a 1.6 times de-squeeze, so it's easier to monitor my image. And on top of that, if you are using DaVinci Resolve and need to de-squeeze the footage, there isn't a preset that's available. So you are going to have to unlock your position and you're gonna have to adjust your Y position to 0.5 in order to make sure that you're de-squeezing properly. Now, I did mention that there are two quirks that might be an issue when working with the 50 millimeter anamorphic lens by Suray. And one is going to be the blue flares that come with it. Now, Suray is known for having the blue anamorphic flares. They were there in their APS-C line. They're there in their full frame line as well. And outside of the 35 millimeter Saturn line, they're only going to have blue anamorphic flares in their lenses, at least for now. 
Now with the blue flares that come out of the sewer anamorphic lens, I actually dialed it back a bit in the full frame version. On the APS-C version, when I watched a lot of reviews, I did see a really pronounced and a really highlighted blue flare that would come into your frame. And for me personally, at first, I wasn't the biggest fan. And that's why I opted for the neutral lens that you could check out right over here. However, even when the blue anamorphic flares might not agree with the light source that it comes from, it is dialed back quite a bit, so it's not entirely off-putting. But what ends up happening is that sometimes when you have a light source that reflects those blue flares, the light source itself doesn't actually reflect the lights that's there. So for example, if I want to point this towards the sun, the anamorphic flares are going to be blue, which might look a little bit weird and unnatural because the sun is definitely not a blue color, but the anamorphic flares are. Now, for some people, that actually might throw them off a little bit, but I don't necessarily think that's exclusive to Suray itself. I do think that a lot of different lenses have different color flares to them, and blue just seems to be the more common one. Now, I do have a solution to the blue anamorphic flaring, and it doesn't actually change the lens, and there's no color grading or anything like that, but it's just finding the situation where the blue anamorphic flares work the best, and that's going to be low light situations. Now, the reason why low light situations I find work the best with the blue anamorphic flare, because honestly, when you're not working in the daytime, you're not working with the high sun and it's not nice and warm, the blue anamorphic flare is gonna make a little bit more sense. One of the setups that I like doing a lot is using my name light pavo tubes at a daylight balance in certain locations and being able to actually have some flares that are blue make a little bit more sense on daylight balance light, especially when you're in low light scenarios, like when you're outside and you're maybe recording a car driving by or anything like that. Now, when low light situations come up, this introduces the second quirk that you might want to be aware of. And there is a couple of different ways that you can fix that. Now, the Suray Anamorphic is a T2.9 lens, which isn't the worst for low light, but also it's not the best in an uncontrolled environment. So if I'm someone that shoots at low light, I might want to go to T2 or even a little bit lower in order to accommodate without introducing too much noise, but also having better exposure. But at T2.9, it's a little bit low for certain situations, especially if you don't have control over the lighting. Now, you can solve this in a couple of different ways, and one is the obvious, and it's bring your own light, so T2.9 isn't too much of a bother. But if you don't have control over that, then you might want to do something like jumping up to your second base ISO, which a lot of full frame cameras have nowadays. Now, I did test a lot of this on my Sony FX6 and on my Sony a7 IV, and they do have a dual base ISO to accommodate for low light situations. So if you are in a pinch and you do need just a little bit more exposure, jumping up to your second base and then bringing things down in post is also gonna bring your noise floor down. In fact, I actually shot a lot of the footage in a previous video with the same aperture but the 35 millimeter version at 12,800 ISO, and it did look pretty good and pretty clean because even when I was using 12,800 ISO, when I brought everything down, it brought the noise down with it, and I still got a pretty clean image. That being said, this is a Suray 50 millimeter anamorphic lens. Now, it does have a couple of quirks with it, but honestly, for its price point and the look that it provides, I still think this is a lens that you should pick up and keep in your bag. For me personally, using cameras with dual base ISOs that do really well in low light, this is a lens that I can use even at T2.9, which is also great for focusing as well, and I can still get that anamorphic look without having to spend thousands of dollars. Now, that being said, if you guys want to see another video, you can go and click somewhere over there or honestly leave a comment down below what lens that you are using in your kit and what your experience is if you do have the 50 millimeter anamorphic lens. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.